Well, a big focus. A pair of provocative strikes that killed enemies of Israel has pushed the Middle East to the brink of a wider war the United States has said that it worked hard to head off. In fact, on Tuesday night, that Israeli airstrike in Beirut killed a top official with Hezbollah, setting off concerns that the Lebanese terrorist group would feel compelled to respond. Hours later, after midnight, Hamas's political leader, Ismail Haniyeh, was killed in a mysterious strike in Iran's Tehran, vastly complicating the calculus and also raising concerns about a regional escalation to some of their highest levels in nearly 10 months of war in Gaza. I must also inform you that according to a New York Times report, Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has issued an order for Iran to strike Israel directly in retaliation for the killing of Ismail Haniyeh. Hamas says the head of their political bureau, Ismail Haniyeh, has been killed in an airstrike by Israel on his house in Tehran. Ismail Haniyeh was in charge of Hamas's international relations and had a key role in the negotiations on the Gaza hostage and ceasefire deal. News of his death came a few hours after Israel killed Hezbollah's top military commander in an airstrike in Beirut. Haniyeh, who was based in Qatar, had been visiting Iran in recent days and participated on Tuesday in the inauguration ceremony of the new Iranian president, Masood Pezeshkian, an event also attended by senior minister Nitin Gadkari. Haniyeh had long served as the head of Hamas's Politburo and was seen as a moderate figure within the movement, one whose rule had become vital in sustained diplomatic efforts to secure a ceasefire. He was elected as the head of the political wing in 2017 before leaving Gaza for exile in Qatar two years later. From exile, he became the face of the Palestinian group's international diplomacy, shuttling between Turkey, Iran and Qatar, joining a group of Hamas leaders sheltering in Doha and unable to return to Gaza. Haniyeh was an early advocate of Hamas entering politics. In 1994, he said that forming a political party would enable Hamas to deal with emerging developments. When he left Gaza in 2017, Haniyeh was succeeded by Sinwar, a hardliner who spent more than two decades in Israeli prisons and whom Haniyeh had welcomed back to Gaza in 2011 after a prisoner exchange. Sinwar is said by experts to be the last word on major decisions by the group. A Hamas official has said the killing is a cowardly act and will not go unanswered. While the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps has said that it's opened an investigation around the incident, experts are arguing that it's one thing to kill Haniyeh, it's another to do it specifically in Tehran. Many are worried that Haniyeh's killing could now lead to renewed fears of an escalation of violence across the Middle East. Parmeshwar Bhava for NDTV. Well, for further clarity on the global ramifications, we have with us Edward Joseph, lecturer from John Hopkins University. Thank you so much, Mr. Joseph, for joining us. Now, Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, has blamed Israel and said Iran had a duty of revenge because Haniyeh had been targeted while a guest in the country. In fact, a New York Times report has stated that Khamenei has issued an order for Iran to strike Israel directly. As things stand at the moment, do you think there's going to be an all-out regional escalation as far as this war is concerned? No, uh, I don't believe that that's the case. And um, although, of course, obviously these dramatic uh, types of assassination, this one in Tehran of Ismail Haniyeh, the political leader, of Hamas and the night before in Beirut of uh, Fuad uh, Shukar, the uh, senior Hezbollah commander. Obviously, the, these are uh, provocative acts. They're dramatic acts, and they uh, invite a response from I Iran, which, of course, is the sponsor of Hezbollah and of Hamas. Uh, in particular, in this case, we have Iran is embarrassed because it showed, demonstrated that it is unable to protect uh, a obvious target like Mr. Hania, 
And it also demonstrates that Israel is very capable of penetrating its uh, security establishment. So uh, Iran is embarrassed, and that, of course, calls for some type of a response. But we have to be very clear here uh, that uh, what are the interests in having some type of all-out war? Iran risks a lot if it engages in an all-out war. What Iran prefers is the status quo where it uses its proxies, Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis, all three of them, to create pressures on Israel without engaging and risking an all-out war that could find Iran in a very compromised situation. Please. In fact, the killing of Hani has also led many to question whether Israel's government had any real desire to actually halt the war there. I mean, Egypt and Qatar, they have warned that Hania's killing would set back negotiations. Do you echo the belief that this will, in fact, impact negotiations in a negative manner? Uh, actually, that's not clear. Uh, this could paradoxically uh, advance the prospects for ceasefire. First of all, it isn't as if the real true leader of Hamas, uh, Yahya Sinwar, and uh, Ismail Haniya were close. They were actually rivals in Hamas. So the true leader of Hamas, Mr. Sinwar, who's safely ensconced in a tunnel uh, beneath Gaza, uh, may actually uh, be uh, okay with the fact that Mr. Haniya is not there. Uh, second, we have the fact on the Israeli side that these two assassinations uh, bolster the credentials for Prime Minister Netanyahu should he decide to actually enter into the ceasefire talks. Remember, for uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, it's the concern is from those on his right who criticize him right. and don't want him to enter that deal, while on the left he's pressured to enter the deal and to get the hostages back. So in some ways, this suits his uh, political uh, posture and, and it could enable him to enter into this ceasefire agreement that the United States is pursuing with Egypt and with Qatar. And I should point out here that those talks have continued in Rome. Right. Those talks continue. So uh, it's not clear at all that actually this will scuttle the opportunities for a uh, all-important ceasefire and hostage return. Please. In fact, Mr. Joseph, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has said that the United States was not aware or involved in the killing of Ismail Haniye. But, you know, many are skeptical of this statement coming in from Antony Blinken. Many are finding the statement hard to believe. Well, um, I don't find it too hard to believe because uh, the U.S. had different uh, comments when it came to the uh, strike on uh, Mr. Uh, Shukar, that is the senior Hezbollah commander in uh, Beirut. And we should point out that that attack, that assassination of Mr. Uh, Shukar, the senior Hezbollah commander, came after Hezbollah killed the 12 uh, children, the youths, uh, who are Druze, I should point out, that is Arab citizens of Israel. And that was uh, Israel's response to that. And we did not have that same type of comment uh, from Mr. Blinken. Uh, and in this case, also, there's a difference in how the Israelis have commented. While they openly took credit uh, at, uh, for the assassination of Shukr in Beirut, the Hezbollah leader, they did not uh, uh, confirm or deny yes. the hit here on Mr. Hania. So we have both the U.S. and uh, Israel that have, have a different posture towards this strike uh, than the one uh, on uh, in Beirut. And why? That's because the U.S. and Israel do not want to further push Iran into a corner. Neither of them have that interest. But finally, let me say here hmm. that we do not see a lot of criticism from the U.S. on these strikes. And the reason is in some ways, this is exactly what the U.S. has advocated Israel to do all along, not to engage in a, uh, a forcible intervention in Gaza, but to use targeted strikes against its enemies and adversaries. And in this case, that's exactly what Israel has done.